Welcome to another unboxing video from theplayersaid.com. My name is Grant. Today I'm not doing a war game. This is a very, very cool narrative style card game that deals with a post-apocalyptic America. We've played the first edition a couple of times. We have several of the expansions. In fact, I have both of the expansions shown on, on the front here, A Journey Into Darkness and Outriders Trading Post. I think I got those at Gen Con a couple of years ago. But if you don't know, this game, Fallen Land, and this box is huge, and you will notice there's a huge uh, neoprene mat that represents the board. It has been probably doubled, which makes it really cool because it, it's going to make it a lot easier for five or six players to sit around it and reach. This goes from one to six. You can do a solo mode. Um but I think it also looks really good. They've made some art changes uh, to the second edition. Very, very much looking forward to that. I'm going to go ahead and lift this up. I just got a hernia. Uh, this game is Fallen Land, a post-apocalyptic board game, second edition. And this game is from Fallen Dominion Studios. There's their logo right there. Uh, one to six players, and it's about an hour per player. So... I'll show you why that is, but one of the reasons that it does take an hour per player, and I actually find that it takes more like 75 minutes per player, is because each round consists of players moving about this board, encountering different things. Uh, when you move into an irradiated zone, you're going to draw a certain card. There's a deck probably of 40 or 50 cards. You're going to draw one of those. It has a story about what that area is or what's going on. You read that, and if you don't read it, you're missing out on a big part of the game. But you read it, takes you a minute, minute and a half to read through it, because you got to add voices and you got to add uh, intonation and, and a little bit of excitement. Very fun. And then you follow it. You're going to roll some dice. There's a lot of dice included. Uh, and then you're going to either pass or fail, and you're going to get a reward, or you're going to get wounds, or you're going to lose a guy. There's any number of things that uh, that could happen. So that's why it's, it says an hour per, per player. I, I think Alexander and I, uh, we, we, we figured it's 75 minutes per player. So a six-hour, uh, uh, I'm sorry, six-player game is probably going to take you eight, almost eight hours. And there's nothing wrong with that. You just have to get the right group together. You have to get everyone on the same page. There is a version for a short game. Uh, here, I'll show you when we go to the map, but short game end uh, here at 10. This is your prestige track and then the town health track. There's a short game end. There you go at 50 points. So you can end the game early. So then it's more like 45 minutes to an hour per. Uh, but let, let's go ahead and stop delaying. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open the box, and, and I'm going to be honest, the art in this one is just phenomenal. I need to figure out who the artist is, uh, but I, I really like the look and feel of this. I thought the art in the first edition was pretty decent. This really takes that up a notch. I think it looks really, really good. I mentioned to you, this includes two expansions, A Journey Into Darkness, which is this one. That adds a bunch of cards. It also adds a solitaire mode, if I'm not mistaken. And then Outriders Trading Post just adds a whole bunch of new cards. Weapons, equipment, heroes, uh, events, encounters, di different things that uh, end up happening. So these are all included. So if you get a second edition, you're getting everything. You're not going to miss content that they released before. I think the only thing you might miss is they sometimes had Gen Con exclusives. Uh, but I ended up getting several of those at Gen Con. This is just a flyer, a promotional flyer from Fallen Dominion Studios. Uh, this talks about second edition, Big Box, and the Descendants expansion. You can see there's a whole bunch of content there. We'll, we'll get into it as we go along. And then it talks about, there's the price, 118 You can still pre-order it on GameFound. So even though the Kickstarter was over... 18 to 24 months ago. I think it was over two years ago, frankly. Uh, you can still pre-order it, and you can actually probably go ahead and zoom in on that QR code and get that. But that's a nice uh, that, that's a nice thing, and they may have just put that in my copy 
so that when we unbox it, uh, you get to see that. These are a look at, I think, a couple of their upcoming games. So let, let's, this one's called Homunculus. If you know about D&D &D and you've played D&D, &D, there is a Homunculus monster in D&D. Uh, Mara Roberts illustration and concept art. So I'm, I'm not sure what this is. There's her portfolio. I don't think she did the art, but this this might be one of their upcoming games. Really nice little, little promotional material. So uh, now we get into the meat of the game. So the first thing we see here is the, uh, like a play aid. And this, this is specifically the first player sheet. So it's going to tell you what a turn it consists of. The effects phase, where you're going to resolve world encounters and other things. Town business phase. The, the, the thesis here is you're building up a town of survivors, building technologies, gaining things, going out scavenging, building your prestige in and around the area, protecting yourself from bandits. So the town business phase, you're going to get an action card. You're going to play action cards. Um, here it says descendants if you're using... Town events deck is utilized, deal a town events card. So that's something that's going to happen in town. Once again, a real great opportunity to add narrative uh, and interaction to the game. Resource production, you're going to get everything that you get from your town. Resources, salvage coins, health, financial. You're going to go to the auction house. I think you can buy cards there, spoils cards. It's like people have gone out, found things, and now you're trying to buy them. Sell and purchase. Uh, purchase. Tier 1 Town Technology, that's going to help you upgrade. Um, town Defense Chips, that's going to help you improve your uh, defense, I think, value versus Marauders, as well as against other players. There is PvP, uh, can be PvP violence here in this game. You're going to hire your characters, NPCMs they call them, non-player character mercenaries, because you're going to draw cards or find cards, you're going to play those. And I, I don't think there's a limit to your tableau that you build. You might have five or six guys in it. Uh, exploits phase. You're going to go out. You're going to run into things. Here, you're going to explore. Or, I'm sorry, exploit. So, you can do a movement deed. I don't remember specifically what that is. An encounter deed. PVTP deed. And you'll notice some of these take more than just one week. Which is kind of interesting. That's going to be done over a couple of turns. Healing deeds, some of your guys are going to have to do party medical skill checks to heal your guys. You do take wounds from weapons, or we fought a cougar out in the wild and it tore us up, or a bear. Uh, a mission deed is going to take three weeks, and then you do the intern phase. So really handy dandy. You might be able to make copies of this and hand that around the table so that everybody has it. There are three books here. They're not necessarily rule books. This is a quick start guide. Let's go ahead and real quickly look at it. It just has some of the basic rules, talks about uh, the town, your town playmat. I'll show you those here in a minute. How you do different things, car carrying capacity, what uh, skills are. This game has skills and your players have to make skill checks, roll dice and uh, hit that target number. Always fun, get some uh, tension there. Gives you a sample first turn, kind of helps you understand how you're going to, even has PVP rules in case you want to do that. This is a scenario book. Really like that art there. Almost looks like a comic book. Um, but scenarios, you can do different uh, competitive scenarios listed there, solo scenarios, alternate setups, uh, no map scenarios. Hmm. Don't don't know what those are. Campaigns and then other variants. So those are just spread throughout this book. So as you can see, lots of replayability. When you see the stack of cards, you're going to realize, oh my gosh, you may not even see all the cards in a single game. And that's going to make replayability fairly high as well. But then you've got this kind of thing, alternate setups and variants and campaigns. And then you've got the rule book. So uh, second edition rule book. I remember when we played this, there were some minor tweaks and issues that needed to be made to the rule book. Um, rule book is 42 pages long. I don't believe this game is overly complex. As I showed you, the sequence of play is fairly straightforward. It's a matter of you under understanding not necessarily how you do something, but why, when, and where you might try to do things. 
Uh, but rules, you can see, fully illustrated, fairly large text, not really a lot of dense. You can see there's an entire huge picture. That's the picture on the cover. Explanation about adventure or the action cards. Talking here about a part, an example of a party skill check. So you can see you've got six guys, and you'll notice each of them has several different pieces of equipment from a high-tech crossbow. This guy has an experimental battle suit. Six eight millimeter a point six point eight millimeter advanced rifle jugs of moonshine. This guy has a police interceptor. That's a vehicle you can have, so you can see that's how that works. And then you're going to roll dice, mostly ten sided dice, and going to have to roll over certain numbers. So it talks about skills, how to do that, equipping using spoils cards, uh, how people die, and yes, your guys can die. Doesn't happen a lot. You got to be careful. Here's the different um, town tech that you can work towards and buy. Everything from a garrison that makes them able to defend better to water and supplies, which increases success on certain types of tests. A learning center that increases success. Machinist shop. Energy production, law and order, communication, medical, marketplace. And those add to your victory points as well. Just kind of a look at the player setup. But uh, nice looking rule books. I think that's going to help. So here's an example of the board. I'm just going to open it up to show you uh, the, the huge difference between the board that is included with the game. Still playable, right? You're, you're able to play it, but the neoprene mat is, is double the size. Things are easier to read. Looks a little more vibrant. But uh, the mounted mat board here is nice. You just need to decide whether you can live, you know, with that or if you want uh, the Big Daddy. Uh, I'm going to show you these. These are like three components that come within the game. These are different resources from spoils to gasoline, uh, different markers here. Let's, let's go ahead and open these up. These are really nice. In the first edition game, everything was a cardboard token and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but I mean, look at that, a freaking little gas can. Um, these are supposed to be like salvage or metal. Maybe that's a canned good. That's a canned good. So that's like food. Uh, these are probably some kind of goods. I just don't remember. It's been a while since we played. Those are really nice looking though. Really high quality too. Uh, these are, uh, looks like ammunition and I don't remember necessarily how they were used so i'm not going to embarrass myself but really nice um probably victory points is my guess but really nice looking component there and then here's the dice and you get a ton of dice here in this and but they do have a custom symbol here let me let me open these up and show you i like that they're brightly colored um 10 siders just a, a really nice touch uh, you have orange, yellow, green, black, blue, and red. You can see uh, there's a you know mushroom cloud, a nuclear explosion there in the probably in the zero space. Yep, it's in the zero space. But really nice dice, and you have basically three. It looks like with this pack you're going to have three or four of each color. And some of them, it looks like you have more. And, and so that's cool. You're always gonna have a lot of dice. You can spread these around the table and make sure that players have access to them. A uh, bunch of baggies, always nice to get those as well so that you can organize it. One of the really cool things about this game is you can see they have these plastic injection molded trays. So these are gonna hold all your various components. These are your faction symbols. Let me open these up. These are really, really nice. I've seen some people who have painted these. I, I'm not going to paint mine, but uh, maybe Alexander will. You can see there's a, there's a look at one. That's an angel. Very, very neat. Here you have a, a wing and wheels. Kind of cool. Uh, those are like, uh, it's a bundle of arrows around. Looks like three tires. Here's a, an owl. These just represent the different factions. You have crossed 
six ciders. If I remember correctly, this was one that was in Texas. So those are really nice, nice addition to this to the game. I remember in the first edition, I think you had those. They just weren't quite as nice. Here's uh, those extra dice. And then here's a whole bunch of markers, all different types of markers. These are actually faction markers. I don't remember if you put those down. These you use to track where you are on the world map. These you might put out in the on the world map when you've conquered areas or explored areas. I, I just don't remember. Um, but that's a really nice addition. There, there's a bunch of stuff in here, guys. Really a bunch, a bunch of stuff. So another pack, uh, plastic injection molded tray with more of those components. You can get a look at those. Not going to show you some tokens, some, uh, some of those components. Just got to organize that a little bit. It, it got shuffled around in, in transit. Here are those town technology chits. There you can you can see the marketplace when you get this. That that's what happens. One free spoils card per turn. That's really nice. So you've got all those different. We've already looked at those. Remember we talked about some of those challenges took more than one week. So this one, you've got a marker here you're going to put out. Oh, it's going to be done in a week. This is a marker that does two weeks. And I think there were up to a three, but it looks like maybe there's only twos. Um, yeah, Di different kind of markers. Let's put these back in before I mess those up. Really need to spend some time looking at and organizing those whole bunch more. It's just kind of more of the same. Tokens, chits. Here's some health chits, wounds. Uh, you've got, those are the, these are the plastic uh, pieces. These are just the counters. So frankly, I'll probably get rid of these and put in the plastic replacements, different markers. I just dropped a marker. Somehow it was a little messed up. So just a bunch of markers here. And, you know, this game has a big footprint. I, I will say that from the cards to the components, a lot going on, and there's a lot of stuff to go through. All right, here, uh, this was put on the side, and these might be, these are definitely some of the Gen Con exclusives that I remember getting. So, yeah, this one is cosplay regalia, <laughs> kind of cool, really like that. And then this one is convention or bus. So they they gave these out at Gen Con over the past couple of years. Uh, these are spoil. That's a spoils card and an action card. So that's kind of nice. Um, I hope they continue doing that in the future. I've always enjoyed those kind of things uh, because it just it's just nice to be able to get that stuff. All right, here is the the box that holds almost all the cards. You'll notice it is the Descendants. This was one of the expansions. And in that expansion came this box along with a whole bunch of, of new cards. So you can see this is a box that will organize all of your action cards, your character cards, your spoils cards, your uh, planes, mountain, city rad, mission cards. Those go with the different uh, terrain symbols on the board. You've got town events. What's the last one that I can't quite read? Miscellaneous. And you can see there are player mats shoved in the sides, which is very nice because that's going to help, uh, once again, keep it organized for you so it's not a total mess. Um, I'm not going to show you every one of these, but these are very nice. The Brotherhood here. The, the one thing that I liked about this game is, is they went to the, the level of not only giving these guys a backstory and a whole narrative about who they are, what their motivations are, what they're trying to do, etc. They gave them different perks. So when you play this Brotherhood, you're going to get these benefits. Blade Cult, begin the game with the Vendetta Dagger Spoils card. So you're going to have an extra weapon. Uh, this one, each town business phase, roll a D6 and receive that many salvage coins. I do find that interesting that I'm not sure they have a D6 in there, but maybe an oversight. We have plenty of D6s, we all do. Uh, it's going to give you the two technologies that they start with, which is nice. And each of those are a little bit unique. This one is unique, the Grand Haven, Michigan, Sons of Neptune, little unique. Uh, that's unique. Um, but it talks about where they're from, St. George, Utah. So this is kind of a play on, on Mormons. I, I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, I, I don't take offense to this. So they're kind of picking on the Mormons in Utah. We're religious zealots. 
I would never run around with a blade and, and threaten people, but, you know, that's just me. Sons of Neptune, Grand Haven, Michigan, Sigma Corporation, Emporia, Pennsylvania. Kind of cool, or Emporium. Did I say him? Yeah, Emporium, Pennsylvania. Los Intermederos, Jimenez, Coahuila. So I'm assuming that's down here in northern Mexico, just across the Rio Grande. Kind of nifty. So they have an international flair. Preservationist, and you can see there's stuff up in Canada too. Thunder Bay, Ontario. There you go. The preservationists. The Highwaymen, Sturgis, South Dakota. So they're probably going to have a motorcycle. Here we go. You're going to start with American Iron Custom Chopper Spoils Card. So you're going to have a vehicle. Coalition of the Black Angel, Iowa City, Iowa. That's where the Hawkeyes uh, are located. And this is the Syndicate, Battle Mountain, Nevada. Those are just some of. You'll notice there's more here. There's more here. It looks like there's about 20 different factions. Um, and those relate to 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. These as well as some of the others. But pretty, pretty nifty. Uh, I enjoy the varied factions, the different skills and abilities that they have. Also really enjoy this box. That is a nice component. Really enjoy that as well. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick a planes event as an example, just to show you. Oh, that says mountain. I went into mountain. Sorry. So this is a mountain card. When you enter an area that's a mountain right here, all these are mountains. So when you're traveling from this area to this area, you're going to enter a mountain with a rad zone, a mountain, a mountain. You're going to have to encounter some of these uh, you, you know, basically event cards or encounter cards. So this one is a militant or a mutant encampment. Militant. I can't read. It was actually blocked by one of the symbols on my phone as I'm shooting this. But it, you can see it gives an introduction there. Crouched on a small bluff overlooking a ruinous marina. Maybe that should have been ruined marina. You observe the bustling activity below. So it gives you an, an insight into what's going on. You need to find a way to sink those ships. I guess we know what you what to do with that C4 we found, says your buddy dryly. Here it's going to give you different challenges that you need to overcome um, and, and the roles that you need to get on those challenges. So it outlines success and failure. You're going to gain one prestige, two spoils, and one action card when you succeed. And it's going to give you a little description of what happens, which is very cool. Failure, you're going to take 8d6 damage. You swim for your life as the mutant forces pursue you in boats. So that's an example of these narrative style uh, challenge cards. And you're going to encounter many of those over the course of your adventures. Many different types, many different uh, challenges. There is ever, I'm going to say this about this game. John uh, Longren, one of the designers, uh, and I think he did a majority of the writing, if I remember correctly. He would tell you that he tried to use every single, um, what do you call it? Every single post-apocalyptic trope uh, that's out there. Zombies, mutants, uh, radiation. Uh, you find a nuclear bomb. I remember one that we ran into. We found the nuclear football, which is the case with the launch codes. And we had found a nuclear silo and needed to figure out how to either launch it or, or not. That was pretty fun. I enjoyed that a lot. So there you go. I've talked here for about 24 minutes. I apologize uh, for my length. But I'm not going to apologize because this game is very cool. going to be honest, it's, uh, it's actually really a, a, a unique experience. I've enjoyed it. It's best with more players, so if you can get a group of friends uh, together, say five or six of you, and play, I think you're going to enjoy it more than if you just tried to play it with two. I know Alexander and I have mainly played it as two, but this would be one of those games that you could take to a large convention that has open gaming areas, get together with a couple of friends, and have a blast. So... I do want to also say John Longren provided this early uh, copy of the game. I believe the game is on a ship coming across the ocean. So my guess is it'll be here in the next 30 to 45 days. 
We're going to try to get this up because you can still order this on GameFound. And I wanted to provide you an opportunity to get a look at what the game is, what it looks like. I'll also show you a character card. I didn't show you any character cards, but I kind of did in the rules. So here is a character. I was trying to remember if they're affiliated with factions that I don't believe they are. Commander Red Naxella, glowing Navy hero. So you can see he has a certain amount of sanity or mental st stability. That's his health. He has different abilities with ranged weapons. And then here are his various skills. I don't remember exactly. Obviously, this is mechanics, uh, discussion or negotiation, um, survival, I think that one is, dealing with bad things, science, health, uh, and, and different things. But you can see he's got a special ability. And then once per game, Red's party may reroll a failed party skill check. Very, very important because you're going to fail a ton of those. And as you saw in that one card, 8d6 of damage, you're going to have to spread that out across your characters. And most of your guys have eight, six, you know, four to eight health. So you're going to end up killing one or two guys um, if that goes off. So that's a look at Fallen Land, a post-apocalyptic board game, second edition from Fallen Dominion Studios, designed by John Longren and his friend. And I'm drawing a blank. Uh on his friend's name. Let me get the back of the box. I apologize. Is it Sean? Dang it. Well, I'm embarrassing myself now. Well, I apologize, John's friend. I believe it's Sean, but I, man, I can't, I can't seem to find it. Anyway, that, that, that's, it is what it is. You've seen it. Uh, I really like the game. Hopefully you'll check it out and, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I've been Grant for the Player's Aid.